my name is Molly Sharp and I'm a metalsmith living in the beautiful mountains of Western North Carolina. And I'm here today to demonstrate for Pocosin Arts School of Fine Craft. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to drill a pebble. A lot of people have been asking me how you do that. I do a lot of pebble jewelry. I do other things as well. But today I'm gonna to show you how to drill a hole in a pebble and put a sterling silver tube rivet in the hole. So to start off with, I'll show you the tools that we're gonna to be using. So we're gonna be using a, we have to have a pan that has water in it. I have a little piece of wood in there so that we don't drill a hole through the pan. And the reason we have water is because you have to keep the stone cool as you're doing it. Otherwise you could crack the stone. You could also use oil for this purpose, but I like to use water. And the other tools we'll be using today are diamond encrusted drill bits. And they come in all different sizes. They come in millimeter sizes. And we're gonna start with a 1.5 millimeter diamond encrusted drill bit and work all the way up to a six millimeter drill bit to accommodate our tubing that is gonna be going through the hole. The other things we're gonna be using today will be a jeweler saw and a three-aught saw blade in there. I'm gonna use a Sharpie pen to mark my stone, and we're gonna use a ball-peen hammer and on a steel block, and that's how we're gonna rivet the tube onto or into the, the stone. So we'll be using that with a punch, okay? So those are the tools that we're gonna be using today, and I'm gonna start off by marking my pebble with the Sharpie, and we're gonna mark one hole that's gonna be big enough to accommodate that tube. And the hole is gonna go maybe like right there. Okay, just a little tiny mark. And then I'm gonna put, place it in my pan of water, and you want the water to be just a little bit on top of the stone. You don't want it to be too shallow. This is actually not enough, so I have to go get some water. And for safety purposes, you if you don't, I wear glasses and I also am going to be using my OptiVisors to do all of this. So I have double protection. If you don't wear glasses, you definitely would use a pair of safety glasses to do this procedure. So here I have my flex shaft, and this is the way we're going to drill the holes using a flex shaft. You also, if you don't have a flex shaft at home, that's fine. You probably have a Dremel tool, and you could use a Dremel tool to do the same thing. Okay, so you've got one here, and you may have one of those, so that, that works just as well. So with the Dremel tool and with the flex shaft, um, I'm going to take and I'm going to start my hole with a 1.5 millimeter diamond encrusted drill bit. So I'm going to start, when you come in to drill into a rock like this, this is, um, these are found pebbles that I, fi that I found in Minnesota and they're basalt. Now you don't want to use a stone that is quartz based or jasper. Anything that's super hard like that, it's gonna be take you a long time to get through. These are basalt and they're quite soft um, and they, they drill beautifully. They came from Lake Superior. I have a whole lot of them. So just know that it, not all pebbles are the same when you're drilling them. So to start the hole, instead of coming straight down, which is ultimately what you wanna do, if, you're, if you know anything about metals, um, when you drill into a piece of metal, you have to, um, you have to center punch it with a little tool. You can't center punch a pebble. So you want to make a little divot into the pebble so that the drill bit doesn't slip all over the place. So to do that with a pebble, I come in at an angle. So I'm coming in at an angle like this, and then eventually I'm going to come up straight up and down vertically, and it has to be as straight as you can get it. So I'm coming in, I'm pushing on my foot pedal down here, which you can't see, but it's down there, and I'm going to pull my up divisors down, Get in close, and then I'm going to come up 
and I'm going to drill straight down. Now as I'm doing this, I'm pushing down and you'll see, if you can see, there looks like smoke coming out. That is the debris inside the, inside the pebble. And as long as you see that happening, you're getting somewhere. And I'm pushing fairly hard. You can see that my knuckles are sort of white. And I'm pushing fairly hard into the stone. And as long as that smoke, I'm going to call it smoke, is coming out, you're, you're getting somewhere. If you stop seeing that, that means either the drill bit is dull or the pebble is too hard. So I'm just going to continue. And you'll hear it when it, you'll feel it and hear it when it goes into the wood. First hole takes the longest. You're keeping it straight, keep as straight as you can. There you go, it's right through. So there we have our first little hole. Now we have to work up into the next level and that would be so that you take your chuck key and this is, goes in one of these little holes in the flex shaft. Take that one out and we're gonna put in a two millimeter drill bit and make a second hole. And you're gonna watch me work all the way up to six. And I just need to open that a bit more. There we go. And like I said, the subsequent holes take less time. I'm gonna just go in there. Not really at an angle for that one. You can just come straight down. You don't, want to, you don't want to go too fast with the flex shaft. You, you don't want to, that's too fast. You want to keep it slow and steady the whole time. Okay, see that was quick. Next one up. This is three millimeters. You could come in with the, with the six millimeter drill bit and try to get that hole right off the bat, but I find it much easier to work up in increments. And the hole seems to be a nicer hole too. And this one, just a little bit at an angle. You need to make sure you're holding your hand piece of the, of the flex shaft in your fist because you need to have control over it. Otherwise, it wants to get away from you. And it goes through. The water starts getting really murky, and if it gets too muddy looking, you can go ahead and just dump it out and get some fresh water so you can see what you're doing. Next one up. Oops, too big a hole. When you put it in, the, if you want to just run it and make sure that it's straight. If it's not straight, it's going to go. You'll see. It, and you can't use it that way. So it has to be nice and straight. Whoops. I just slipped. All these drill bits are just a little bit different. The, sh the, the uh, mandrel part of them are different diameters, and so I have to keep adjusting. One more. 
And you can see, once you know how to do a hole and a pebble, you can do all kinds of fun things with them. If you saw the pictures of my finished pieces of jewelry, there's only a small portion of the things that I do. But you can come up with all kinds of fun ideas with drill pebbles and sterling silver or brass or gold or whatever metal you'd like to use. And this is the last one. Careful. It's hard to see now, it's getting cloudy in there. switch over to another drill. This one seems to be dull. So I'm going to switch over to another one that's the same size. There we go. We got the hole. Let's, let's see if it fits the tube. The, food, the tube fits in it, and it does, okay? Now it's a little bit, this is a tube that is uh, sterling silver. It's 6.35 millimeters in diameter, the outside diameter, um, which is, it's actually a little bit, the hole is a little bit loose. I mean, it'll, it'll still work, but these come in certain sizes, and so do the drill bits. So you have to try to get the ones that are close fit. But this one will work. The other thing about it is sterling silver and it's, um, it needed to be annealed. So if you don't know what that means, I had to heat it so that it actually gets, softens the metal just a little bit. So this has already been annealed so that when you do a rivet, you always, always want to anneal your piece, whether it's a tube rivet or a wire rivet. So this has already been annealed. So now, move this out of the way. Finished with that. And we're going to cut a piece of tubing that's going to fit. So you have to, this is when you come in with your file, your flat file. And I'm going to move over here to do this. And here's my bench pin that I'm going to be working on. So I'm going to file one end of this tube perfectly flat and flush. And just keep looking at it so it's nice and flat. through my hole and if you can see what I'm doing here I'm letting it stick out on either side of the stone about maybe two millimeters so you can see on that side I'm gonna mark it with my sharpie on this side about the same so there's a little mark on there and that's where I'm gonna saw it off Jeweler saw, I've got my blade in there. I have to tighten my blade. I'm giving it tension. And then I'm gonna saw it. I'm gonna try to make it as straight as I can. So it's just enough so I can actually break off the, the end like that, just break that off. And then of course the other end now is um, not perfectly straight and not perfectly smooth, so I'm going to 
I'm just holding it in my hands, I'm gonna file this at the other end. You could, I guess you could hold this in a, um, a tool of some sort, a jig or something, if you can't hold it in your fingers. But I use, I use my fingers as tools as often as I can because fingers don't make marks on metal, whereas tools do or can. So I'm just using my bench pin to, to support my hands as I'm doing this. And I'm just flattening and straightening that other end. Okay, so now, Putting it back in, and there we've got sticking out about the same on either side. All right, steel block. And I've got a couple of pieces of leather that I've poked holes in. Some people like to use uh, a credit card that they punch a hole in, but this is two purposes. One is to protect, help protect the stone so it doesn't crack when I'm, hit, when I'm hammering, and also to raise it up just a little bit because you want the tube to be sticking out on both sides equally. So if I had it flush on here, it would be, there wouldn't be anything sticking out on this side. So this raises it up just enough so there's, because you're gonna be flaring that metal out over the stone and that's what holds it in. So to start the flare, I'm gonna use a punch. It has a little, little round head on it. And I'm gonna just stick it straight into there. And I'm gonna, with a ball peen hammer, just a regular old ball peen hammer, you can use any kind of hammer. And you're gonna hit it and you're gonna start that flare. And I have to warn you, sometimes these stones break. So you have to know that there's just, just the nature of it. This this one might break. But it's just started that flare. And if you can see, I don't know if you can see that very well, but there's a start of the flare. And then you turn it over. And you make sure you stick it into that hole in the leather. And got it flared on both sides but it's a little wiggly and it also isn't laying nicely and flat on this on the stone so what I want to do now I'm going to try flaring it just a little bit more on this side Finish it off. I mean, it's it's in there. It's not going to come out, but it is moving. So now I'm going to put it down on again on the leather, and I'm going to take my ball peen hammer, and I'm going to hammer it around the edges. And turn it. Try not to hit the stone like I just did. this toggle by poking another little hole over here for the chain and fabricating a little toggle for the for the stone and that's how you do it okay thank you so much for watching watching and thank you to Marlene for setting all this up and to Cosin Arts thanks for watching